Well, hello, YouTubers. This is Bob Hickman. It is so good to be back with all of you. Well, a lot of you wrote to me and said how much you really enjoyed the tree scrying video that I did. And uh, I'm really honored that you, uh, you guys enjoyed that. And some of you uh, it raised questions for you about fairies because as I was telling you, when I looked into that tree, I saw little leaf patterns that reminded me of fairies. So I took that as a message for me that the fairies were, were, were around me and wanted to be more active in my life. And I do think that was a valid reading in that tree scrying session. Anyway, so that raises the point. A lot of you said, Bob, tell us about the fairies. Are fairies real? Where do they come from? How do you work with them? Well, I think that's great questions. Well, first of all, to answer the simple and basic question, people say, are fairies real? And my answer to that is yes. If you study throughout history, there are many recorded accounts of people having interactions with the Fae. The Fae, F-E-Y, is the traditional spelling uh, of the people that are we commonly call fairies. Now, fairies can be spelled F-A-I-R-Y, F-A-E-R-Y. I like the F-A-E-R-Y spelling. To me, that's closer to the, the original Celtic spelling. The fairies come from the Celtic tradition. Uh, the peoples of the ancient British Isles had many encounters with them, but they aren't limited just to the British Isles. Many people in the United States have seen them, people in Australia have seen them, people in Asia have seen them. They've been throughout Europe. Many of the European countries have traditions of the fairies as well. The fairies, in a nutshell, are simply elemental spirits of the earth. Now, some people say that the fairies are the souls of the dead. No, I don't really agree with that. I think the fairies are their own class of being. Uh, and I do believe they inhabit the earth. Now, you know, a lot of the fairies right now are very much in hiding. There is so much destruction upon this earth that they, you know, they're very leery of human contact. Um, people say, well, if they're fairies, why hasn't anyone captured them? Well, the fairies are very powerful and very elusive. Now, in the, uh, you know, the movies, they always show them as tiny little beings, you know, about that big. But really, the fae can be anywhere from that size up to full human size. There are many encounters uh, listed where people actually met fae face to face, and they weren't sure if they were meeting a human or a fairy, because some of them take a very human appearance. Some of them are small, just like you see in the traditional pictures and movies. Anyways, so yes, to answer your questions, the fae are real. I have yet to actually see a fae, but I have had an encounter where the fae would steal my jewelry and move it around the house. Uh, there was a time a few years ago when I was working on making contact with the fae realm, and uh, somebody at the time told me, said, oh, you know the fairies, they'll, they'll steal your jewelry, be careful. And I said, oh, I don't believe that. Well, I had a ring that I used to always wear, and my ring literally was always kept on my altar at night. And one night it just disappeared. I got up the next morning, it was gone. I didn't find it for a full year. And when it reappeared, it was in a very strange place. Um, it was inside my silverware drawer uh, in my kitchen. Very bizarre. Anyways, so the fae um, are not necessarily evil. They're not dangerous. They are their own class of being. Now, there are some people who have said that their encounters with the fae were less than positive. That the fae may have, in a sense you know, attack them or scared them. And I think that comes from that the Fae generally don't play by human rules. They kind of have their own uh, hierarchy, their own kingdom. And if humans dare to approach them, you know, remember, you're in their territory. Uh, so, but the wonderful thing about the Fae is the Fae can be won over. They're very amenable to humans. And because the Fae are very spiritual, they're very psychic, so they can perceive humans who will be open to their presence and will make themselves known little by little. With the fae, you have to earn their trust. Anyways, the point of today's video is, some of you say, well, how do I start to connect with the fae? Well, one of the best ways is, as I said during the tree scrying video, go out in nature, work, you know, walk in the woods, work among the plants, spend time in nature. That's where you'll find them the best. For those of you who live like me, though, in a more urban environment, it's very difficult to find a lot of places like that. You can bring the Fey to you. And one of the ways you want to do that is to set up a Fey altar. So, today I thought I would set up an altar for the Fey and uh, show you guys how I do mine.
All right, so keep it here. Now, one of the things that you want to do when you set up your altar to the Fae is find a place that is peaceful and quiet. I'm actually going to move my altar over to my windowsill here because it's very natural. But uh, right now, because I can't move my computer cords, I'm going to just set up an altar temporarily here. But when you're, you're setting up your Fae altar, find a place that is harmonious for you where you can sit and meditate. And if you can be near plants or a window, that's even better. Okay. Now, the first thing you want to do is, you know, I recommend you get a kind of an altar cloth. So I have here a beautiful green pentacle altar cloth. And green is a favorite color of the Fae. In fact, uh, I'm wearing a green sweater today to honor the Fae. In the old uh, Celtic traditions, Green was considered the sacred color of the fairy people and those who work with magic. So I'm going to make my green cloth here the base of my altar. Now to that you can add some other things. For example, I would suggest that you get either a picture of a fairy or a statue. And you can get those online at most places. Check eBay. Uh, here is a print that I happen to have of a beautiful fairy. I think she's so pretty and exotic looking. And as you see, she's got green leaves woven in her hair. And she has a crescent moon, a symbol of the goddess. So this is a fairy image that I really resonate with. And if you notice on her arm, she has a little pentagram wrapped with a little leather cord. So I think she's really pretty. And so we're going to put an image of the fairy at the heart of our shrine. Now, you know, the Fae love to be acknowledged. So when you put up a picture or a statue, we're not actually worshiping a picture or a statue. This is just a sign for the Fae that they're welcome amongst us. Now, one of the next things that I would encourage you to put at your Fae altar is a little offering dish. The fairies are very much respond to humans who leave offerings for them. So I have this beautiful little green dish. Now in my shrine, the color green predominates. You don't have to use green in your shrine. You could use any of the earth colors, brown or orange or gold. You know, these colors are very harmonious for the fairies. So, but I like the color green, so I have a little green offering dish. Now you don't have to spend a lot of money. Just find a little dish that you like and put that there. So this is going to be our offering dish for the Fae. The next thing that we want to add are some little offerings. I uh, per picked up recently some little star anise. This is a wonderful herb. I think it's very, very magical. So I've got some star anise, and we're going to add that to our shrub. So we'll put some of these on the plate. They smell really great. If you've never smelled star anise, it smells like licorice, and you can see it's like a little star. The fairies love this herb. The fairy work is all about working in harmony with nature and herbs. So you might want to offer to the fairies a lot of natural things. Now, also in addition to that, I have a beautiful blue salt crystal here. I think it's very mystical. Now I'm going to put that on my offering plate to the fae as now, well. Some other things that the Fae love are jewelry. So I also brought along a little jeweled pin that I found. And this is a little crystal pin with rhinestones and crystals. And the Fae love shiny things. So I got this little, little pin jewelry piece. I'm going to offer that also to the Fae. Now you also might want to set out a little chalice and with some water or some honey. The Fae are very fond of this as well. So I have a lovely little silver cup here. It has a little pentacle on it. And that also will go on my shrine. The Fae love things that are symbolic of stars or moons or, you know, natural elements. So try to keep a natural harmony within your altar. Now, some of you uh, may wish to uh, add some greenery. So that's always wonderful. Uh, you could put house plants on each side of your picture or statue. Uh, today I didn't have any plants ready, but I did find this wonderful uh, vine uh, 
that I picked up. This is one of my from one of my trips to the dollar store. And I think it looks very natural and very harmonious. So we could put this, for example, around our picture here of the Fae. And this would make just a beautiful decor. And you can just adjust it to make it look in harmony with your shrine. So as you can see, we're building a lovely little shrine to the Fae. And I hope that they like it and are drawn to it. One of the other things you want to get is also, if you can, a little book to record your experiences in. I recently got this lovely little journal. It's got a picture of the goddess on it. And it's made of leather, and it's got the goddess on one side. In fact, it's, let me untie it here. It's wrapped up. It has a cord around it. But it opens up, and you can see on the back side it has the goddess with the stars above her and moonbeams coming down. And that's her looking into a pond of water. So she's the mother of the earth, the mother of the seas, mother of all green life. And the Fae very much venerate the goddess. For the Wiccan tradition, the spiritual paths of the pagans emanate from the Fae originally and came into the human realm. But they're all united under the goddess. So this is a wonderful little book here. And in it I can record my meditations and write down my thoughts and experiences. And the wonderful thing is, as you work with the Fae and they show themselves to you, if you keep a record, down the road you'll have a written account to share with others, or just for your own knowledge of your connection to the Fae. So we want to put our little book here also with our shrine, with our altar. Well, guys, I hope this has given you a little bit of insight. You know, once you set up your altar, it's really just an issue of meditating every day, bringing offerings. The Fae, once they know they can trust people, will manifest to you. I hope that you'll set up a Fae altar, and maybe you'll share your experience with us here. I'd sure love to get some video responses. And, uh, you know, let me know if you find out if you have an encounter with the Fae. It'd be wonderful to hear from all of you. So, good luck with making your altars. Let me know how it goes. Keep it here at Spirit Channel. We've got much, much more coming. Thanks so much. Blessed be.